the last time you had to buy light bulbs, what did you wind up coming home with? Was it one of these guys? An incandescent? The light bulb we've used for over a century? Or was it one of these guys? A compact fluorescent, or CFL? It's a more modern light bulb. Or, did you pick up the light source of the future? A light-emitting diode, or LED bulb. If you've heard of these LED bulbs before, know that there are many benefits to using them. They're very energy efficient. Your electric bill will go down substantially. They can also last for years and years without any replacements. They don't get hot, and they don't have mercury in them. Some can even easily change colors, which is both a cool party trick and a way to have some more natural feeling light inside of your home. Here's the problem. LED bulbs are expensive. An incandescent is less than a dollar. A CFL, about a dollar. But these LED bulbs are $10 each. Why is this? Now, to answer this question, We've got to understand how LEDs work. And believe it or not, it's pretty similar to your typical football game at Michigan Stadium. If you've never been to Michigan Stadium, think of any big event with lots of people in a very tiny, tiny space. Specifically, I want you to think about the end of that event. You've been on your feet for hours and hours in a very high energy state. And at the end, all you want to do is get somewhere where you can relax. But first, you have to navigate the big crowd of people to get back to your car. When you finally get there, what do you do? You hop in your chair, lean back, <sighs> and you let out that sigh of relief. Now, for our purposes, let's avoid thinking about that traffic jam you have to navigate. Turns out that this whole process is exactly how LEDs work. Take two materials, one with very many electrons like the stadium, and one with very few electrons like your car. Put them right next to each other. Just like you, electrons let out little sighs of relief as they move from the congested high energy area to the more open relaxed area. Except their sighs of relief are a little bit more special. You see, people just let out a lot of hot air. But electrons, they let out light. And that's how LEDs work. Get a high energy electron to go to lower energy. On the way, it lets out light. The problem is, when we try to make LEDs go from these tiny guys, these are like the indicator lights inside of your computer or car, which don't need to be very bright, to these guys, which are used to light up an entire room. You see, the easiest way to make an LED brighter is to just add more and more high energy electrons. Then you've got more electrons going from high energy to low energy, and the more electrons that do that, the more light you get out. But it turns out that it's not that easy. You see, the more electrons you add, the less efficient the LED becomes. That's kind of the whole reason we're doing this, right? To understand what's going on, Think back to that game at Michigan Stadium. You see, the more people who are crammed in there, the longer it takes to get out. Because instead of just being able to beeline right to your car, you end up having to bump into other people on the way. Electrons do the exact same thing. They wind up bumping into each other instead of just going to lower energy and emitting light. More electrons does mean more light, but it also means more bumping. And this is what makes designing LED bulbs so difficult. You see, they can't just use one LED and make it very bright then it won't be very efficient, which is a big part of what we're doing here. Instead, they have to use many LEDs, which are all a bit dimmer, but together will be bright enough to light up a whole room. This is what makes the bulbs so expensive. They have to use more LEDs per bulb, those LEDs all have to focus light in the same direction and work together in a confined space. Now, my research is on reducing this bumping problem. If I could figure out how to do that, this would allow LEDs to be both bright and efficient and allow LED bulbs to use fewer single LEDs per bulb. With fewer LEDs per bulb, the price of bulbs will go down, and these become more affordable for everyone, while these become difficult to find, unless you're in a museum and they're on display. So the next time you're bumping into people on your way out of a football game, remember, that's just like being an electron in an LED.